to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas and today we're looking at the local fashion scene in a very special way. Right now at Ala Moana Center on level two, Mauka, um, is a, a, a new venture and it's called the Fashion Annex. And, um, there's a spectacular show on right now with two local artists who don't necessarily usually do fashion in the sense that we, we think about it. Um, Marcus Marzon, who is um, at the Bishop Museum, and Solomon Enos, who is wherever the winds take him. And um, they uh, were brought together uh, through uh, Namea Hawaii, uh, Miley Meyer, and through the Hawaii Fashion Incubator. So. Wow. Um, from now until October 25th, yeah. right? It's open noon to five every day. Every day, yes. Is um, a very different experience for Ala Moana. So um, maybe you could each, how, how did you get pulled into this and, and, and why, why was it an interesting project? Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us both um, on, your, on your show. It was, it's an, uh, great opportunity for all of us to experience different things and like you were saying to have art being presented in a shopping commercial setting is a new way to to understand what um, are aesthetically pleasing to to people in the commercial world versus the the community and, and a cultural perspective so uh, this is a wonderful blending of those of those two worlds um, I had the opportunity to um, be a part of this just by coincidence. Miley Meyer called me up one day and asked me if I would be willing to showcase some of my work alongside of Solomon's work, and and I said I have the uh, uh, I have time. I have some pieces to share if, if you want them, and and this is what ended up. Wow! So uh, her genius strikes yet again. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Solomon, what was it, what was your how did you get drawn into this? Oh well. Thank you again, and yeah, thank you, Marcus, uh, and, and everyone here uh, for the opportunity to share because it really is storytelling. It's what gets us into trouble all the time. <laughs> you know, uh, I think we are, we're one, one thing that was really important about this work was a call, an invitation uh, to acknowledge the fact, you know, that, you know, location, 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 location. Bringing, you know, um, Chan, you know, bringing fresh water and fresh ideas from an ancient and sacred reservoir is such an important way to help to pass on wisdom, especially to parts of the city which, you know, needs, you know, I think, I think really folks need to really get Hawaii, really get it, especially because one day they're going to be it. <laughs> you know, you want to malama aina now because you're going to be aina. Right? So that real strong connection is so important. <laughs> Sorry, it was a little slow on that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My you family, know. we all go to the Kai. We don't end up as Kai. Which is, you know, <laughs> which will be rained back down upon the uh, watersheds, you see. So it all being a circle. And I think the need to bring and, and to help bring sustained wonder to as many lives and to as many perspectives as possible is, is, a, is actual you know, it's a really pragmatic thing. It's actually the best form of security is to make sure that everybody in your community feels a deep sense of wonder and love. And that's, I mean, the beatniks were talking about this forever, so it's nothing new, and it's, it, as have all the other indigenous cultures that learned how to make it work. You know, how to sing the kinds of songs that allow you to dance with nature as opposed to fight with nature, right? The guys who fought with nature always lost. So. All of that's encoded. That's all source code for both of our work. We have been working independently, and this opportunity came along uh, to bring these ideas to, uh, to a location which you almost can't miss. If you're in Ala Moana, you're passing through. Um, you know, the irony, the irony of the name Ala Moana is very interesting, too. <laughs> which is, uh, I don't know who tried to explore that. But Ala Moana is also going to look very different in like two to three hundred years. So it's going to be the Mala Moana. So <laughs> sort of like the underwater gardens of... Uh, anyway, well, I, I've definitely gone off on a tangent. Um, but it, it's really, really neat because as you're walking by, you get, you get some really neat access to nutrition. You know, and, and the story that I think we're talking about is 
an extremely hopeful one because it talks about the regrowth of, um, of sacred ideas, ideas that are deeply grounded in a people who love their land. And when you look at our work, you will see like, wow, these people love their land. And you can come and experience how much we love our land through, through the stories that we wear. And when people go back home, they can love their land just as much, and they'll never need to go on vacation ever again. So we just... <laughs> the stories we wear. I love that. Yes. I, I, I actually have a, a, an, an ethical system for, for clothing in my closet, and in the morning I, I, I work through it. I don't know if everybody does. <laughs> well, probably not everybody. But one of the great gifts of this show is um, I am familiar with some of these pieces because they were part of the Mamo wearable art show. Um, and you said actually over a years. Actually, all of the pieces in, in the current show at, at Ala Moana have been on the runway at... Uh, in the Mamo Wearable Art Show in various years, starting as far back, I believe, uh, 2008 is the, is the oldest of the pieces that are on display at, in the show. Okay, we have a little um, bootleg clip that I took from this year, and um, we'll see that. Um, so tell us, um, tell us what we're looking at, Marcus. So this piece is uh, a piece that I created. Um, the model, Anuheli, um, Thomas Anuheli, is wearing this, uh, this garment. But again, it is, it's inspired by the peahi, the fan, uh, fan, Hawaiian fan. And you can see the, the motifs that I printed onto the surface of this, uh, this piece. But also the idea of movement and what a fan does, the, the, uh, the, uh, the moving of space yeah, and, and changing of space depending on what is around you. Uh, and what is it made out of? So uh, the, the material is a raffia cloth. Um, it's not from Hawaii, but it's, it's one of my cultural heritage cloths from the Philippines. Uh, and it's a combination of, of different, um, myself, uh, my different ethnicities, my Filipino ancestry, my Japanese and Hawaiian ancestry all combined. So it really is a true self-portrait of my, myself and, um, to the world. So this is a dream come true to actually get to ask you about these things. As I was watching them, I had so many questions like, the pleats, pleats are so interesting. All of a sudden, they're, they're appearing. Um, uh, Halal Kekuhi uh, had a lot, bunch of pleats. Well, pleats, what about pleats? What, 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 what's this thing of pleats? I think for me, the pleating is the folding of time and space. You know, the idea that it comes back and forth. It ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. And if a flat piece um, can be presented one way, but in, when it's coming and going and presented in that fashion, you see it from a completely different perspective. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. right? Wow. That happens to be my favorite uh, cultural event of, of, of the year. Yeah. yeah, that was fabulous. <laughs> anyway, so that's what the, the, they look like. But what's, a, what's so fantastic about this um, show at the Fashion Annex, which is titled future, no, Reboot. 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 Fusion. Is that you can get up close yeah. and personal yeah. and really look I mean, really look at the incredible handwork. And I have some images of, um, of uh, the display that have like labels on them. And uh, as we go along, we can just, just reading the labels with very unusual um, materials like uh, beetle wings. <laughs> beetle wings, pig intestine. Um, all different kinds of materials, felts, um, yeah. Okay, so oh, this was, um, you know, Solomon, I have to tell you, that you, you can't, maybe you can't tell, but this kid is catching air. He was having so much fun with your images. Oh, fabulous. So he oh, was jumping up and down wow. and playing with the shadows, and perfect, he was just perfect. having such a good time. Oh, so that's, that's, that, what you just shared with me is the feeling that I had when I was drawing all of the figures on the wall. <laughs> so one thing that really, and I'm so happy to hear that, um, one thing that really inspired me um, about Marcus's work is the, the, the nets the intricate connection between all of these different fibers and intentions. It, it's like how we weave together all of our dreams in a community. And where the phrase, where there's dissonance, where there isn't enough of a connection, you know, a, a, a way to be mindful of it. I think that's what our, our good ali'i did. We're able, and, and our good, good community organizers did. We're able to look at the network of our community and say, oh, 
your net is only going to work, you know, dependent on how many big pukas you get or not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your big pukas, then oh, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, and a big and, and that puka is just going to rupture. So, I, I really saw those fibers, and so so to be able to create uh, one of the things that was needed to be decided early on was because I have original artwork that I just drew on the wall in the space. We had to choreograph a little bit of where some of those ideas would exist, because I really wanted them to um, to, to create a kind of a kinetic representation that would help to um, you know, cohesively tie the show together at a glance because you have these figures that are moving right across the entire, you know, at, at different locations in the exhibit itself. But it really brought, you know, a focus to, you know, um, I, I'm almost gonna, it's almost like what Carl Sagan said when he said like, you know, we are the, we are the way that the cosmos can know itself. So when we are weaving together fibers, we are weaving together DNA. We are at cutting edge. Uh, that says, you know, the, whereas, whereas the rest of the universe is mostly falling apart, we're putting things together. We're the exception. Exactly. We're, 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 so it's actually, violence is actually completely natural. Meteorites are violent. Most of the universe is pretty violent. So to be lovingly weaving things together, we are rebelling against everything. We are the magic in the cosmos. The cosmos looks back at us and says, what is that? That's a, that's a weird aberration. You know, so we are the magic, and I think knowing that we can change realities and change stories, and ch you know, begins with knowing that I can change this fiber into something else. You know, Tran exactly. that trans that act of creative transformation, uh, which you are, uh, uh, Marcel, going through the the intricate tying. I mean, there's no way you can follow those. I mean, I don't know how you, I, I, I knit. I have no idea how you keep track of all of those, but you've been taught by um, I've learned from different, different um, people over, over uh, the course of my life, from Kupuna, from, from teachers in school, from the university, from books, from, from collections, museum pieces mm. themselves. Mm. Just looking at the Kupuna things that exist in the, around the world. And um, you get to do that because you're at, at... And because I work at the Bishop Museum, I'm quite lucky to be able to, to have access to those kinds of things um, at my workplace, um, but also the ability to travel around the world and see those different things that um, exist around the world because not everything exists here in Hawaii for, for so many um, traditional practices. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for young uh, young artists or people um, today who want to uh, understand who they are, um, the connection to Hawaii, to, to explore mm -hmm. the world because mm -hmm. the world um, isn't, isn't a place to go out and ex um, to, to see and, and try and understand, but it, it, it's, a, it's a place that allows you to reflect back upon yourself and understand you better, yourself better. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. and let's just take a minute to reflect back on ourselves and understanding, and um, we'll be mm -hmm. right back. Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Think Tech. My show, Quok Talk, normally airs at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays, but it's going to change to 11 o'clock. So don't miss it. It's an hour later. You can sleep in a little longer. Come with me and engage in some sensitive, provocative discussions on everything. It's all good, all right? Women's issues, things that people don't dare talk about, we want it on the table. So join me. Aloha. I'm Chantel Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. This show is for you. It's all about inspiring and empowering girls of the future to do what they love, get out there and be healthy, fit and confident. If you're up for that, 11 a.m. every Wednesday, I'll see you there. You're watching SingTech Hawaii, which streams live on SingTechHawaii.com, uploads to YouTube.com, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo54. Great content for Hawaii from SingTech. <laughs> Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas. With me here today is Marcus Marzan and Solomon Enos. They are the um, artists who are currently featured at the Fashion Annex at Ala Moana. Ala Moana Center's second level on the Mauka side. If, you, if Nordstrom was where it was last year, you'd walk by to get there. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 
So it's kind of an unusual title, Reboot. Uh, what's, what's that about? Um, reboot, uh, it's the reference back to a computer to return back to the original formatting um, and, and starting a refresh again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the, the base foundation from everything from which it starts. So that's so much of what we do um, in our work. Um, myself mm -hmm. reconnecting to our kupuna materials, reconnecting to the different de designs, and, and then taking them into a modern context and relevance today, yeah. even though they're not of doing the same thing as, the, as our kupuna in the past. Um, they make um, a stronger impact and have a, have a purpose for, mm -hmm. for what we do today mm -hmm. and, and make sure that we always reference and con keep that connection back to our things, our references to the past, but, but ensure that it progresses into the future. Oh. I thought that is, right? I love that. I just, right? I, I have so many images in my mind are in your uh, I'll, I'll try to. Walking <laughs> through there, I'm like, everybody has yeah. to come to this show yeah. because yeah. of exactly that. Yeah. So often in the, in the Hawaiian artistic community or however we want to label ourselves exactly um, there's like well that's not traditional mm -hmm. or you know there's that <laughs> that one side and yet how to how to be really mm -hmm. true to what's moving you mm -hmm. um, and your your history. I think you. This is. I have yeah. never seen such a, a stellar example of this yeah. between the two and, of you. And just as you were saying that, um, our culture is like in this area, this this uh, clearing of light, and it's this lay, and it disappears off into pull into the darkness. And if we tug on it, that's our ancestry. It's all there. It even though the line we can't see the line, we know that line goes on forever. You know, so that we know we have that culture. And it's somebody's been at it, and it's been a bit jammed up. So when we got a reboot, what does the kupuna say? They say, don't just go up to where the pilikia started. Go before. Go back and undo more of the lay. And then when you redo it, you start before the problem happened. So you make sure that what you weave back into the lay is only the best stuff, and you wash your hands, and you laugh, and you sing, and you tell stories again. And then you, if there's plastic and glass and aluminum, you got to weave them in there, well, do it harmoniously, but weave it in there and make it beautiful and do it right. But it is a real, it's like they're almost like the reverse of follow through. It's pre-follow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, follow the, before, I mean, you follow through true, but you need the, the opposite of follow through, which is yeah. you know, a really powerful beginning, a, a returning to begin. The, also, the, it was meant to, to tie into something really quickly, I thought it was really important, is the is the, the stories that we wear. I was originally going to have a giant boot made out of human form, you, you know, humans. And that's what the, uh, all throughout the show, you'll have humans linking together uh, as part of the background artwork that I created, you know, in the space, which I took about a day to do. So it was lots of fun. Um, but I decided to say, well, actually, it's really going back to the, orig to the foot, the original design of the foot, and thinking about then coming back to this sense of, you know, nana ike kumu, you know, look to the source. Coming back to this idea of trying to understand, you know, the true nature of what it means to be human, and maybe redesigning. Uh, maybe it's not about redesigning a better sneaker. Maybe it's better redesigning a better world, you know, for your feet to walk in that you don't have to worry about stepping on glass. Maybe it's, you know, not a better sneaker, but a better community to walk in, you know, and then extending that, and to bring that out really, really quickly. Back and forth, is that the, the idea that you know people are wearing stories, or our kupuna could tell you where this fabric came from and where this lay came from. And they could, all night, it would unravel like an entire ecosystem of stories could come from a single object. I don't really know where this shirt came from. Well, actually, I do, right? But right? I, don't, I, I don't really know who made this shirt. I, I don't know if they're OK. I don't know if they're safe right now. You know, so I think that the idea of there will be a time using augmented reality to be able to look at somebody's clothes and like text and narratives will come flowing off of people's hats and things, and not just a stupid price tag with a number. It'll be like, this hat was made by a family who are safe and whose children are living in a system that's getting safer and safer every day. And I'm going to continue to, it's a lot of text, but we can make it cool. You see. And thank you for that vision. I, I try in a very small way to do that in my world. This jacket was made by my cousin. She. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 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 talk about the story that you that, that you're wearing. What are you wearing? Uh, this this shirt actually was made from a good friend of mine, um, Tutuvi. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So Big she, fan yeah, of hers. she's she's wonderful, and and I'm I'm very supportive of all that she does. And um, but again, I think what Solomon created for uh, for the show, the, the the entry wall of the of the foot with all of the the, 
the drawings of the different people connecting to one another. It's those points where they connect, which is the most special thing, especially in my work. Mm -hmm. All the knots, all of the, the points where things come together. Two the, different materials. Two different so materials coming, to coming together, and th that, that energy that's created by the linking of those two things together mm -hmm. is the most powerful thing in, that I look at in my work. Um, and to see what he created on the wall, to see all of this, it, this network of uh, figures all touching one another in, di in different ways. It, it's just beautiful, and I think uh, that totally um, pushes the, 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 the message forward. Yeah. So that, um, that green dress on the right, that's the one that is now Paka dyed and has Ooh, yes. beetle, and beetle wings. wings. Beetle wings. Now, where did you get beetle wings? Um, well, <laughs> you know, I, I source my materials from all over. Um, some, some of the materials are locally sourced. Some of them are uh, from away. Uh, those particular beetle wings actually come from China, um, <laughs> okay. um, from, but they from were Asia. From dead. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> actually, beetle, the, those particular beetles shed their exoskeleton every year. Um, so those are the one. Uh, those are the, just the wings that are uh, from, they the, didn't from die, the jewel the beetle. They did not oh. die. <laughs> <laughs> no beetles were killed oh, in the making of that dress. I, 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 <laughs> I thought you never put the stick, uh, the sticky on top of the stick, and a beetle line on top, and then you have okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, like the feta. Okay, like the <laughs> <laughs> That's my cut here. My cut here. Uh, the timeline that you were working with in oh, yeah. those drawings. Oh my gosh, um, uh, forty thousand years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? And I that, thank you. You know, it, one of the one of the neat things about this project was that you know, even though Marcus and I were we're working in different studios. I think the illusion is that we're working in different studios. And it really is this broader idea that we're all, you know, we were all really working on things that, um, how, you know, it's like almost like quantum entanglement. But, you know, but the, so the work that I created, it's, it's so, it, it's um, really based on a 40,000 year timeline that I started about, uh, about 10 or 15 years ago. And it's a really simple thought, like what if I created an image of an archetypical figure that represented uh, what the most important human would be every thousand years and that and it actually um would then give us an understanding over forty thousand years how just through fashion through what they're wearing you know you, like in a, in a very in a Sherlock Holmesian sense you could infer an entire universe from all the things that they're wearing and why they were chosen as the most important archetype for that millennium and that would help you di to digest forty thousand years at a glance I think so that's the key is is digesting huge swaths of time because I think that's what the shamans and within all of our cultures, they thought of things in millennial sweeps of time. So, and, and this, is an er, this is a figure from the early, early days. Yes. And yes. In, in, in the later days, it, you um, allowed for the morphing, substantial oh, morphing uh, of the body. Oh, we're, <laughs> we're not done cooking yet. <laughs> <laughs> we have all these forms to get to transform into. And I mean, I'm a really big, fan of I mean, looking at science fiction as like a splint to help to realign what we what maybe got disconnected about our own culture uh, slightly broken bone you know science fiction is a great way almost like a cultural laboratory to take the sawdust from something and to make a patch you know to, to take you know bits and pieces of a material and to try to rebuild something and that's kind of what I was thinking about because as much as I really would love to create animation, science fiction, video games, I mean, whatever, but enough for Polyfantastica, I also want to be able to come back to and tell our traditional stories in as much amazing fashion and glamour and everything. And um, that 40,000 year narrative is really based on a simple idea of what would happen if Hawaii was never interrupted. And I even want to broaden it to say what would happen if all of our cultures were never interrupted and we were left to maybe meet each other in, in beautiful harmony and we said you head that way and I head this way in, in 40,000 years we'll, we'll meet up again and when we do we'll be like wow I got 40,000 years of storytelling let me be sure to wipe my nose and not get you sick in the meantime <laughs> you know and then it was a groovier way for people to come together yeah. you know and to almost a, an animist futurism you know and where <clears throat> and I think based upon that kind of idea that's why I'll never be bored. That'll be, that'll be the project I'll be working on for the rest of my life, the 40,000 year narrative. But what I love to see in the work was that I am like a theoretical physicist. You are the engine, was it the technical physicist, or the engineer, right? I come up with a theory and you build the hydron collider <laughs> to physically see how would you build it? Because 
we're going to make our movies, and we're going to make, do th you know, I'm, uh, my, my job is the artist in resident at the Hawaii Theater, so I really am thinking about the theater outside. We want three, foot, you know, three story tall puppets made out of recyclable and kappa coming down the streets, yeah. working with kids from the you you know, different parts of the, the Pacific who are, you know, definitely whose voices are drowning. Horton hears a who. Horton's going underwater. <laughs> Horton's being, yeah, anyway. But um, really great opportunity to look at. And, and what I saw when those people, were, young men and women, are coming out dressed is this is the cutting edge of healing. This is the cutting edge because what we're seeing is not only does a culture come back, it thrives exponentially. And I think that is, you know, that's, that's the follow through. <laughs> Let's say well, zoom. <laughs> as if to um, solidify in, or uh, embody that there was a very, um, there's a great picture of the two of you. And I didn't know until um, you guys came into the studio today with uh, what the story behind mm. that is. That was a picture of you two the, the, in, the, in the, yeah, what is the story here? So, so this was just a dramatic um, a moment that um, was just an amazing moment, yeah. actually. <laughs> um, I was bringing in my pieces to, to the space uh, so that the, the um, exhibit designers could see the works and try and organize the things. Solomon was painting on the wall, the, the foot for, for a title wall, and lo and behold, we're both wearing the exact same shirt. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Calapico, 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 for, for yeah. Calapico. Yeah. That yeah. is the ancestor sense of humor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think when they, when they find out the root of dark matter, it's humor. <laughs> Mark my words. Yes. Humor. Douglas <laughs> Adams was right all along. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still right. <laughs> So just to recap, the, the show is going to be there until October 25th, 20, 25th and yes. it's open from 12 noon to 5. Is it um, every day? Every day. Mm -hmm. And um, what's in the last two minutes, um, what is next? Who knows? Okay. I, I, you know, I think... <laughs> what would you like to be next? Well, what I, well, I, what I like to, to do is... Um, to encourage people to remember where you come from yeah. and to always um, explore and innovate and, and be inspired by our things from the past, from the environment that we're surrounded by because we are a living culture. Yeah. We're, not, we're not just fixed to those things that were made from our kupuna. Our kupuna made things and they innovated things. So the idea that the, the innovations that our kupuna made were the traditions or are the traditions of our present. So all of our innovations we, we create for ourselves today will be the traditions of our future. Wow. I love it. Okay. We have the, half, a, half a minute. Perfect. Perfect. My goodness. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. And again, everyone for the opportunity to share these stories. And, and I almost think like maybe t today what we've done, we've been providing a bunch of different combinations. A different, it's sort of like we're trying a lock. We're trying a lock. And then somebody out there will say, uh, we'll get the right combination. Like, oh, we got it. We got it. Because the key here is, to, is that, you know, you know there, there is a way to think about these islands as so much finite space. And there is a way that there's so many inches across these islands. <laughs> and we can make every single inch mindfully woven together as harmoniously with every other inch of these islands. We can do it. And that we can be, though, and that, and that of course, maybe the, it's, the, it's the beginning of the upena, though the solid beginning, and then we will weave this out globally. And I think the, the, the opportunity to then provide this as a template for how all cultures can reboot, because we're all native people to somewhere, you know, and we're an all indigenous people of somewhere. And I think that, you know, identifying the way that we can weave ourselves and our stories together um, means, which is, which is why, you know, gets back to the idea of, you know, um, you know visualize world peace, we all need to be artists. We all need to be artists. Thank you both. Thank you. <laughs>